What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm here at the Red Brick House tomorrow, heading back home. Um, we've got a memorial service to go to on Saturday for uh, a great friend and mentor of mine, Alex. Um, you know, we... we we constantly keep working here at the Joe Blue Sports Report, okay? We want to make sure we get everything done. And I want to, I, I'm not sure how to react to this. Micah Parsons, um, who is the lion, who is the heart and soul of this defense, and damn sure one of the team leaders of this team. You can't think about Dallas Cowboys defense without Micah Parsons. He is one of five players to have 100 pressures in a season. He is only the second man with Reggie White to have 13-plus sacks every year to start his career for the first three. Dan Quinn has been incredible working with him and getting the most out of Micah Parsons. So Micah Parsons was asked about Dan Quinn getting names being tossed around for Head coaching jobs. Defensive end Micah Parsons. This is per John Machada. Micah Parsons on Dan Quinn getting a head coaching interest and potentially being his last run with Quinn. It's the nature of the business. It could possibly be my last ride with Q. And if it is, we're going to make sure it's a damn good one. I, I love that part of it. I love that part of it. But the second part is the part that made me kind of pause. Dan is my guy. And if he does leave, it's always love. He might take me with him. You never know. That's like a father-son bond right there. That, that's beautiful. But that lets you know how important Dan Quinn is to this organization. And if anything, when, when, if I'm an owner and I hear Micah Parsons say he might take me with him, I, I all of a sudden start getting a sense of urgency to try and say, sign Dan Quinn. Um, Dan Quinn can pretty much have I, – I, this is the way I feel, Okay. Um, and it's funny because it, it kind of ticks me off because people have all kinds of assumptions about me and my thoughts and so on. Um, yesterday, I talked about um, when Pete Carroll was let go, that immediately the pa the excuse me not the Packers the Seattle Seahawks would definitely be interested in him taking over for um, Pete Carroll. And I dare say that I believe that part of the reason why they went ahead and said we need to let go of Pete Carroll now is because they didn't want to lose the opportunity to get Dan Quinn because so many teams are interested in him. Everybody's interested in him. Um, people basically said, oh, you made that up. No, I mean, it's, it's not hard to see that, that the success that the Cowboys have had on defense makes him a hot commodity. And you have to say if you're Jerry Jones – you need to understand how strong that bond is with Dan Quinn and Micah Parsons. And I believe that this is where you need to let him know, say, hey, you know, I know, you know, see, hey, hey, you know, Dan, <laughs> you know, I know Seattle, that, that, that that's a place that's got a big spot in your heart. But you know what? We them boys. And you know what? You're the next in line to be the head coach here of the Dallas Cowboys. And you know how much Micah Parsons, how much you mean to Micah Parsons and how much you mean to me in this organization. And just think, man, you know, Pete Carroll, he gets, yeah, he, he gets a lot of coverage. But you know what? You get more coverage here as the defensive coordinator of them boys. And you, my friend, are going to become the head coach, the head coach of them boys, where you can go ahead and run the organization the way you want to. 
but you just got to be a little bit more patient. You know, there's nothing wrong with leading around a little bit. You can keep mixing it up with the defense and everything and, and keep coaching your, your guy, Micah Parsons, and picking the right guys and making this in a historic defense. You don't want to start all over with somebody else. You know me. You know what the situation's like. And he needs to have that. Oh, and, and you know what? I'm going to put a couple extra million on your contract, too, there. I, you like that? Yeah. Because you need to do that, Jerry. You need to make sure that you do not lose Dan Quinn. Uh, we've seen what happened to the Eagles losing their two coordinators. That team has literally fallen apart. They've literally fallen apart. So do what you have to do to keep Dan Quinn here and keep the Lion happy and hungry because we want him to feast on quarterbacks. Now, I got, I got a little bone here to pick because, you know, I have been a Dallas Cowboy fan long before one Dak Prescott. I have been a Cowboy fan long before Tony Romo. Or Troy Aikman. Even before Roger Staubach. I'm that old. And people have this saying that the only thing I care about is Dak Prescott doing well. Uh, the, uh, person will be name, nameless here. on, uh, And I don't know why you constantly have to tag me in your shit. I don't need to say, you know, if you feel a way about me or something like that. Go right ahead. But you don't need to tag me on every freaking post that you do. It's freaking ridiculous, dude. You tagged me before because you literally said, I can't enjoy watching the Cowboys because they can't win against good teams after we lost to San Francisco. And I was like, dude, you go do you. I'm going to watch my Cowboys because I have faith in them. Okay? I have faith in them. If you don't, that's on you. You live your life the way you want to live it. But jackass, don't come in here and say some stupid shit like Mark Holmes doesn't care about a loss. He only cares about Dak Prescott looking good. You know what? You can kiss my high yellow ass. The reason why I've been in the tank for Dak Prescott is because of all the bullshit that we get. Yeah, we could have done some of the shit that people wanted to have done. We could have traded for Russell Wilson, and we see how that freaking worked out. We could have gone ahead and tried to get Deshaun Watson because people said, that guy's better. We tried Andy Dalton because, you know, Colin Cowherd told you there's no difference. We could have gone out there and got a Derek Carr. They literally said, don't pay Dak, trade for that guy, and brought him here because, of course, he's doing nothing but winning. We could have drafted a first-round guy like Mac Jones or Sam Darnold. The reason I have been on the bandwagon for Dak Prescott is I realize he is a good quarterback. And if the last year and two years ago where both seasons he had 37 TDs that year and 4,902 yards, one yard short of the Dallas Cowboys all-time passing record, 37 TDs, which was now the, or excuse me, is the Dallas Cowboys record for touchdown passes. This year, his 36 is tied for second with Tony Romo. A guy who plays two more years will own every single record of the Dallas Cowboys except interceptions. And when people had the freaking narrative that he's a turnover machine, I tried to tell you that the dude had a broken thumb. The reason I try to tell you guys he's good so we don't do some stupid shit and try and say, let's get rid of him for something cheaper. Please do not tag me in any more of your shit. You want to feel a way to think that the uh, only thing I care about is Dak Prescott looking good? You don't know me and do not tag me in any more shit, please. Stupid shit. I ain't got time for stupid shit. If you don't think I care about the Cowboys winning, you damn sure don't know me, bro. Hope you all have a great day. It's always some jackass out there trying to stir up some stupid shit. Peace.